America. Yes, Keith Costas with a new segment <laughs> the program. I just wanted to let that sit for a second. Blown away with Keith Costas. What do you have for us today, Keith? All right, we've got five trivia questions here. Some of them might be a little challenging, so I've got some clues if you need them. This is all Hall of Fame stuff, It's all right? Hall of Fame okay. related, correct. Got it, okay. All right, we may have for the second straight year a unanimous Hall of Fame selection, but I'm wondering if you could tell me which first ballot Hall of Famer was inducted with the lowest vote percentage. Whoa. Ooh, that's an interesting question. It's kind of uh, tough, so we'll start with the clue. Ron, you faced this guy when he broke into the big leagues. He was just 19 years old when you first faced him in his rookie season. Wow. You, Robin Yount's older than you are. It's yeah. not Robin. Yeah, a little a little bit further down the road, generation-wise. Okay. Uh, a lot of gold gloves in this guy's trophy case. i brainstorm on this one together. A lot of okay. gold gloves. Another hint? Yeah. yeah. He was involved in J.T. Snow's second most famous moment at home plate in the postseason. So second not, most famous. Not rescuing uh, Dusty Baker's son. Right. His second most after that infamous moment. Did he have like a big slide? Slide, he did. Where he was... Collision with a catcher, perhaps, in yeah. a series clinching moment. It's, is it Pudge? It is Pudge Rodriguez. Let's Rodriguez. take a look at the vote totals. He was with Texas. For some of these guys. Just snuck in with, 60, with 76% a few years back. I mean, what, you know, I don't, I don't understand, like, some of these numbers. Lou Brock didn't get in with higher than 85 or 95 percent. The crotchety old riders were far more crotchety back in the day, apparently. <laughs> Smaller hall. Yeah, crotchety exactly. Small hall guys. Back then. My goodness. All right. All right. Second got? question. Here we go. The Rockies are one of three teams that do not have a Hall of Famer. And we're talking about guys who have the team on the cap, on the plaque. So the Rockies are one of three teams. That could change later today. But I'm wondering, outside of the three teams with no Hall of Famers, Colorado, Miami, and Tampa, which team has gone the longest since their last Hall of Fame inductee? Ooh, great question. Wow. Um, you know, Tony Gwynn got in within the last 15 years, 10 years. Uh, Okay. It's an historic team. They actually had four Hall of Famers in a three-year span right before the drought began. Not the Reds. The right color, though. Or close to the right color. Cardinals? Phillies? Phillies. There you go. Okay. Back in 1996, Jim Bunning. We did not get to the Senate clue, which would have potentially set up running the yeah. infamous Herald speaking to Congress video. Oh, man. I love history. <laughs> I know you do, Harold. <laughs> All right, moving on to the third question. There's 13 Good. players that have won back-to-back -back MVPs in MLB history. Eight of them are in the Hall of Fame. Two of them, Albert Pujols, Miguel Cabrera, are active. Three have not been inducted. Can you name the three back-to-back -back MVPs to not make their way to Cooperstown? Can name one, Dale Murphy. Yeah, we Dale, got Dale Murphy's Murphy. one. Back-to-back -back MVPs not to get in. One of them should be fairly obvious on the ballot right now. He won more MVPs than any player in MLB history. Bonds. Bonds. That's cool. correct. Uh, and you said we, we don't count the active guys? We do not count the active guys. Out. One more player won his back-to-back -back MVPs about 15 miles from this studio. Mm. No, not a, one of the Yankees. Maris didn't win back-to-back. -back. Maris did win back-to-back -back oh, MVPs, wow, 60 and good. 61. Not in the Hall of Fame. There's the list right there. Wow, that is, uh, okay. This guy changed the whole direction yes, yes. of the Yankees yes, season. Yes, yes, yeah, they'd never done anything before Roger Maris. Showed right, up. That's got it. spot on, D-Row. <laughs> All right, last two. They're personalized. One for each of you guys. We'll start with you, Ron. Okay. You faced 18 Hall of Famers in your career at least 20 times. Can you tell me who had the highest batting average and the lowest batting average in those matchups? Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm thinking how many at bats, but I, I, Tony Gwynn hit. Tony Gwynn is the answer for most, including I, I've you. I've heard you talk about that a yeah. lot. Now, how about the lowest? And in fairness to this guy, a lot of these, almost all of these matchups were towards the end of his Hall of Fame career. Oh, boy. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, the, the two guys I faced the most were Ryan Sandberg and Tim Raines. Um, towards the end of his career, I'm, I'm just thinking maybe uh, Joe Morgan? No, Matty, you have a connection with this guy, too, albeit briefly. Hall of Famer that had the lowest batting average against Ron. Could have gone pro in a number of sports. Dave Winfield. Dave Winfield. There it is. Let's take a look. Look at you. Pre-Lee boy. It's hard, hard to look at yourself 20 years ago. I know. We were much better off then, weren't we? Oh, my goodness. <laughs>
<laughs> what was the, hey, what was the number for Winfield against Ronnie? 136. Wow. Cool 441 for did Tony not, Gwynn, It did not right feel there. like that. You were you were scared to death every time you stood in the, in the batter's box. And we just yeah. saw it to the track, just a long out. Do you have any, any recall of those plate appearances? Like, did you, do you remember doing something with those at-bats? I, I, I remember that um, because Dave was such a tall uh, athlete, that there was a hole inside that you could go because he just couldn't get his hands there. Okay. But, you know, you would miss anything away and you're afraid for your life <laughs> up the middle. I mean, he just, because he didn't hit anything about, about 20 feet high. So. That's, that's, you know, I had a feeling you would remember that. I love now that. Now there's only one more. Yeah, okay, now okay. There's only one more. Okay. And this one's for you, Vergasian. Okay, yes. <laughs> All right, Matt. This is a little complicated, so stick with me here. You called games for the Brewers from 97 to 2001, the Padres from 2002 to 08. Do I have that correct? Correct. All right. Which Hall of Famer played the most games against those two teams during your tenure as the play-by-play -play man? So combined games, oh, Padres, wow. Brewers, during your tenure with the broadcast team. It would team. be uh, Jeff Bagwell or Craig Biggio. That is correct. Do you have an answer of which one it might be? Uh, I'm going to say Biggio. It is Biggio. Very and nice. let's take a listen, a little sampling of Matt and Craig Biggio. A lot of stuff flying off of Biggio tonight. A special effects movie. 3 2 pitch. Hit well to left. Line, line tar, whatever else you want to throw out there. Craig Biggio having himself some kind of night. Well, it ain't McGuire's 62nd, but that fan's certainly happy to have it. Biggio's fourth hit of the night is a solo dinger here in the eighth. I did oh, not realize we we're going to get a Carl Everett cameo. That right. was the right video to choose. Shout out I, to I, I had not fully realized the effects of acid reflux disease and years of alcohol <laughs> consumption and what it's done to my vocal cords. I sounded like a much younger, spry human being back in 1998. Well, Biggio loved having you on the call. Almost a 900 OPS in those games. Well over 100 points over his career average. So you saw the best of one of the best. Sure did. I mean, so much optimism wiped away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's torn right away.